Lara Fabian hits the channel with a very, very poignant, a moving, emotional performance of a song that will touch a lot of you for reasons I'll give in a minute. It's called Luby, and in French, well, in it, Luby in French, and in English it means oblivion. There is a poignant story behind it, but we'll always give the bio for those people who are not familiar with Lara Fabian at this stage. She is better known as Lara Fabian, a, a Belgian Canadian pop singer and songwriter, sold over 20 million records worldwide um, as of 2021, and is one of the best selling Belgian artists of all time, or Belgique artists of all time. Now, Fabian is the only child and raised in the Belgian town of Brusbroek. Fabian's parents recognized the talent early on and enrolled her in the Royal Conservatory of Brussels where she was eight years old and she studied there for 10 years. Well, she's never looked back because I always remember Lara Fabian competing against Celine Dion way back in the Eurovision Song Contest where they both represented their countries. And I think Celine was selected for Switzerland. She was asked to come and represent Switzerland where obviously Laura uh, represented Belgium and they're both on my channel, check them out. But if we fast forward to what she's been doing, she's been a very busy woman, Laura Fabian, because she's done a world tour in 2022, the best of Laura Fabian world tour. She's also right up to recently um, did a 50 world tour that was from 2019 to 20. So she's done two world tours and she's kept up to date with um, looking after her daughter. She's married to a Sicilian magician and artist, Gabriel Di Giorgio in 2013. So she's happily married. And then the best of Laura Fabian, as I said, more recently World Tour kept her very, very busy. What is today's song about? Everybody, this is what it's about. And it's written by Lara Fabian. When one of our loved ones, she says, is subject to a neurogenerative disease, that's off the brain. The loving look we put upon him or her, upon our family, is the strongest thing that, rem that remains. Even in the most violent tempests, submerged by sadness and loss, even when words are failing, this loving look makes a difference. Today, I testify to free those of us who live this painful voyage from the mutism, the silence and the taboo which prevent this look and this connection. Today, my family and I, our hearts laid bare, testify by putting our look upon all those who urgently need comfort, empathy and relief. This is our testimony, testimony testimony on Lubli. I've learned that one is never lonely when the look of love is upon us. Laura Fabian. Be back with the lyrics straight after. Mouvement, elle regarde dehors pour voir s'il fait beau temps du fauteuil au divan, du fauteuil au divan, plus personne dont il faut prendre soin, plus qu'une seule tasse à sortir. Pour elle rien n'est vraiment Tout à fait comme avant Du fauteuil au divan Du fauteuil au divan L'oubli L'oubli comme une impasse Sur les gestes qui blessent L'oubli comme elle déplace son passé, sa tristesse L'oubli est en surface Ce qui nous fait souffrir Mais 
Et c'est à l'intérieur ce qui l'a fait tenir. accepte son sort sa mémoire qui foule quand tu passais au présent tu passais je parle avec elle de tout de rien de son enfance ça ça elle s'en souvient mais du bouquet de roses que je viens d'apporter restera le parfum mais l'image envolée l'oubli l'oubli comme une impasse sur les gestes qui blessent l'oubli comme elle déplace son passé sa tristesse L'oubli est en surface Ce qui nous fait souffrir Mais c'est à l'intérieur Ce qui l'a fait very emotional. Those that know me well and know my family and know my siblings know that we as a family went through a similar situation with my mother. May she rest in peace because my own mother got cancer and it was at the back of the neck and it traveled upwards into the back of her brain and destroyed her brain and within months she lost her vision her speech and became confined to her chair her room her bed all of it immobile but never gave up on prayer never gave up on hope and she believed in a prayer so much that she kept asking me which i was lost at the time very confused and hurt by her demise. And I said to her, it's unforgivable that we pray and you pray so hard every week, lighting candles in the church and you do so much things in your life. You're so giving to so many people that God could do this to you. And I was very, very bitter as a son. I, I couldn't comprehend such a beautiful looking blonde haired woman um, bedridden and she said to me one day holding my hand tightly do you smell roses and I said no mother I don't smell roses why and she never said anything it wasn't until her death when I was 
moving the pillows and the bed and changing the sheets did a prayer fall out and on that prayer so the middle lines was um, no the s summary of the prayer was and if you smell roses God has, uh, has uh, cured you so she always asked about that and with her disease it was too quick too sudden too soon the, the cancer totally destroyed it within a couple of weeks from a vibrant woman first grandchild my sister had the first grandchild and she had everything to look forward to looking forward to her full retirement had worked all of her life and one of those stories within a couple of weeks taken away but watching it travel watching her neck swell and the operations she had to remove the lumps and it going into her head and I tell you to have a to have even anything that affects the brain it just sends you to oblivion I understand the lyrics already before I even begin I've been there I've wore the t-shirt as they say so we will we'll go to the lyrics now it begins she walks slow slowly as if out of time suffers her body all her movements she looks outside to see if the weather is good from the armchair to the sofa from the armchair to the sofa no more person to take care of only one cup left to take out in the morning two for her nothing is real quite the same as before from the armchair to the couch from the armchair to the couch it really is that that when somebody's condition is so catastrophic that the demise of that person from being able-bodied to non-able-bodied and only being able to go from a chair situation to a couch situation back to a chair then you have to lift them into bed and do all the things that you know they become baby-like they're dependent on you you have to take them to the toilet take them back wash them down all of it you're their nurse you're their carer you're their loved one you're their sibling you're their offspring you're their cousin or sister or brother but you watch it and and you feel so angry and so at loss watching somebody just go from one small place to another and, and they can't do anything else terrific it continues she's still so beautiful right now in, in this black hair not a single white hair she accepts her fate her memory which is gone from the past to the present from the past I speak with her about everything and nothing it's true you ramble on about when you when I sat in the bed I, I went on rambling about how she was a great mother and, and all the things I was thankful for but she never was able to take in the information you talk to her and she can only retain maybe one or two minutes of it and then dementia took over because the disease is not correlating properly with um, the memory so she couldn't retain anything spoken so you took it continues about her childhood that's her I remember the bouquet of roses that I brought the perfume will remain but the image gone forgetting it's like in the room what remains the smell of the sheets my mother's perfume the flowers sent by loved ones that are wilting wilting away like the memories over time and all that remains is the void the emptiness the hurt and the loneliness you feel without that person in your life who's got that degenerative brain disease but it doesn't have to be this song can be open to so many people that have suffered with diseases that are now not here but with this particular song it's very poignant because I've been through this this is almost speaking the past of what once was when when I was dealing with my mother's illness it continues forgetting like a dead end on the gestures to hurt oblivion as it dispatches its past its sadness oblivion is on the surface what makes us suffer but it's inside what 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 keeps us going it's very true your inner strength surfaces 
in times where you feel I've no strength left mentally physically I'm exhausted I don't want this to be happening you're confused you're angry you're sad you're always in the dark side of things there's no positivity none whatsoever the false smiles that takes effort to always in front of a loved one that has a disease to try and be positive that takes immense mental effort that affects your physicality so you go downhill and then you have to find the strength to lift your ill relative and be there in a positive way for them and it becomes a one horse race and the only sign of relief that you get is when your loved one dies it's a terrible thing to say it's a sense of relief no more of this because I am nothing now you want them to be better but if they don't you also want this anguish gone away and it only goes away through death and through death you feel guilty you go through the emotions again but eventually healing comes it's an awful situation to watch a loved one go through this and you feeling guilty about not being able to cope but we never say it do we it finishes forgetting forgetting like a dead end on gestures that hurt and that is what I've just mentioned forgetting as it displaces its past its sadness forgetting on the surface what makes us suffer but inside what causes it to hold oblivion like the heart so that nothing remains oblivion like a savior it's for evil for good that's your the turbulence between your faith losing it praying being angry at your faith because your loved one is dying in front of you you're helpless you want to be strong your faith is to blame so you go through all of those and that no one understands because nobody understands you as an individual what you're feeling when you're watching this you're different to your siblings and everyone else that is watching it some are affected more than others but it's still at least it's scars because it finishes that no one understands but for her it's the place that finally his soul returns and that's when inevitable death takes over the soul returns to heaven and you're able to look up and pray to your loved one in a, in a more relaxing positive way if you're suffering that I wish all of you all of you my love and prayers and if not and you know of somebody reach out to your friend or your loved one that is suffering with their relative that is going through this just reach out send a text say I'm here for you it makes all the difference in the world the feeling the isolation of loneliness confusion and anger one feels when they're dealing with a disease like this you're in my thoughts take care